Hi, I'm Chef Celeste, and you're watching Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures, where we talk all about things grown in and around Louisiana. And today, this episode is all about beef. Cooking for Associated Grocers, their semi-annual food show in Gala. We've got uh, some, uh, looks like uh, boneless beef butt tenderloins, which is the big end of the tenderloin. So we're gonna take these out, get them cut open here just a second, and we're gonna season them up. And the Gala, which is tonight, what we're cooking for is um, that's where all the store owners and managers come, and uh, it's a good it's a good place for us to advertise beef, and 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 how good it is, and 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 just another way to prepare. USDA choice. You start with a good piece of meat, and you wind up with a with a with a fine product at the end. Put two in that package. My name is John Thompson. Uh, I serve on the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. There are nine seats on the council and uh, we monitor and um, I guess for a better term divvy out the checkoff funds that uh, from the beef checkoff. These are all going to be three to four pound filet butts and we'll cook those for an hour and a half to an hour and a half to um, hour and 45 uh, for 325 degrees and uh, it just melts in your mouth when they come out. Checkoff dollars are uh, every time somebody sells a head of livestock, one head of livestock, it's a dollar taken out of the check. Uh, 50 cents goes to the National Beef Board and 50 cents stays in the state of Louisiana. I serve as one of the nine representatives that govern that 50 cents that stays in the state of Louisiana. And it's got to be used to promote beef. This uh, pit, it's a 42 inch pit. It's eight foot long. The trays are 14 inches by seven and a half. And it's a rotisserie pit. It's got four trays in it. And with those rotating around, the meat based itself. Uh, so in other words, the meat that starts dripping on top is dripping down on the meat below it. And that's a continuous cycle the whole time it's cooking. We chose, uh, we could have cooked ribeyes. We chose these filet butts. Uh, it's a, a, a more top end uh, cut. Uh, it's just the big end of the filet, uh, which is the filet mignon. These things are cooked whole, and it's kind of like a, a prime rib, but except it's filets. And we'll slice them up, and uh, we're gonna have uh, some caramelized onions. And uh, for those folks that like a horseradish sauce, we're gonna have a little bit of that. But uh, 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 I'm not from up north, but it seems like more of your northern people want that. It's through outreach like this that the Beef Council, in partnership with industry, work to promote beef consumption. Did you know that beef is such an important part of our state? We have an important guest when we come back and we're cooking T-Bone in the kitchen with our 4-H students.
Welcome back, folks. We're in the kitchen <laughs> with Commissioner of Agriculture and Forestry, Dr. Mike Strain. Welcome. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Well, thanks for coming on out today. Thank so, you. It's been great fun. It has been. So beef. What? Beef, how it's big what's for dinner. It's a it huge is. industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we have more than a half a million head of cattle here at any one point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, and so with the overall contributions of this industry, you know, you're, you're talking about a hundred million dollar industry per mm -hmm. year. It's huge. And so the thing about beef cattle, it's all across the state and it's a good reliable income for many, many farmers. And the thing about beef, you know, and we're a traditionally a beef state. Mm -hmm. You know, my family's been in the beef business now for six generations. So what makes us a beef state? Well, the fact that we have a lot of beef cattle here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a climate that's very conducive to raising beef. And there mm -hmm. have been beef cattle here since literally the 1700s. So, Commissioner, the nutritional value of beef. Tell well, the nutritional value is huge. You know, think about this, a primary source of protein, a lot of B vitamins in there, mm -hmm. iron specifically, a lot of minerals. So it's packed with vitamins and minerals and protein and omega-3 uh, fatty acids. Okay. So it's a very, very complete food. And it's something that, you know, as mankind's been consuming, yes. you know, for tens of thousands of years. So that's why we say beef, it's what's for dinner, but it's actually at all meals. Exactly. You can have beef. And you think about you know, how we enjoy it at all, all of our celebrations, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You know, what would a barbecue be without beef? And you think about what we've seen today and what we're doing today, you know, the beef steak, the hamburgers, the stew, there's mm -hmm. so many different forms of beef. And it's healthy, it's nutritious, it's delicious, and you can cook it in a very short period of time. Commissioner, thank you for coming out. We'll see you in the kitchen shortly. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Now, guys, I'm in the kitchen with my 4-H students. So I'm going to go come down here on the end. Tell me your name and what do you love about 4-H? What have you learned? Um, my name is Dana Thompson, and I love that I get to learn so many leadership skills through 4-H and mm -hmm. go on so many trips where I can meet people from around the world and then learn what they do with 4-H. Okay, very nice. How about yourself? Uh, my name is Ty Abear. I'll show beef cattle, actually. And 4-H, it just gives you so many opportunities and to mm -hmm. meet people, like she said, from around the world. Mm -hmm. And for in the future, whenever you're looking for a job, you're going to have connections that you made through 4-H. Very nice. And how about yourself? Um, I'm Annabella Park, and I really love 4-H because you get to go in these competitions about food, all different like, categories up to like beef or poultry and seafood. So many categories, you don't know what to pick. All right. I love well, them all. We have a great crew here today. So what we're going to do, we're, we're making a T-bone today. So you're going to work on me with okay. that. And what I want you two to do is make a salad to go along with that. You're also going to make a vinaigrette. So you have my honey mustard there. This is some Meyer lemon um, oil. And you have some peppers. And you have a little juice from the peppers. So you're going to make a vinaigrette to go with that also. So you got that? Yes, you got to bring out the creative side because we're going to taste it afterwards. So that is all for you. So work away on that. Now, for us over here, we're going to get the steak. So pull your T-bone over, and I'm going to tone, turn this down a little bit. So with that, I want you to season it up however you like. Just let your meat kind of talk for itself. So you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now take a little bit of the oil and put it in the pan. Just, yep. yep. Just put about a teaspoon. Yep. Good. Now I'm just going to let that go all the way around. Look at that. Look at that pan sizzle. Awesome. <laughs> Put it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're just going to let it sear, put it whichever way you want to put it. Now, when you place your meat in here, the first side that you put down, that's going to be your pretty side. So what's happening to this meat right now? When the sugar compounds and the amino acids mm. react, mm -hmm. which gives the color the like the amazing brown color of the beef and the amazing flavors in it. Right. So that is exactly right. And that's the thing you people really don't understand why your meat gets that beautiful brown color, but this is actually why there's a science behind it. So while that's working, we're gonna make some compound butter. Take out about half of that and put in your bowl. Mm hmm And we've roasted off some garlic in the oven already. We took a clove and um, just put a little bit of oil on the outside and just let it roast. The fun part about this, I want you to take, I'll take this, take your garlic mm -hmm. and squeeze it over the butter. Okay. So what's gonna happen since it's roasted, 
it's just going to ooze out and we're going to use what comes out. Now go ahead and mix all that in together yep. and I'm going to step around here and get to your steak. Now let me show you something. When this comes up, take a look at that. That's your seasonings, all of that. We're going to turn this over and let it keep going. We're going for medium rare, but we all we are going to finish this in the oven. I like to finish my things off either in the oven or if you're doing outdoors cooking, then of course you're going to move it away from the flame when you're continuing to cook it. Just put it on the uh, side with the lower heat so it can just finish cooking to the degree of doneness that you like. Now look at that. So in there, this is already salted butter, so we're not going to add any more salt in there. But I am going to add a little bit of pepper. Go ahead, keep going. And some crushed red pepper because I want a little bit of color. And I think I'll put a little bit of dill. Done. So now that we have the compound butter blended, what we want to do with that is take... Um, we're going to take this spoon here, and let me show you. I'm going to pull it. We want to form it. So, take it and just blend it on there. And hold that for me. Let me get another small container because this is actually going in the refrigerator now. We're going to chill it. And you may think, well, you're putting it on the steak. Why are you going to chill it? But you will see why in a minute. So I'm going to put this little bit right here. Come on off. Be nice to me. And you can put it in a little mold or anything like that if you want. So you want to put one on there? And then pop it in the fridge. So, okay, guys, we're going to get this in to the oven. They're going to finish up these salads. And we'll see you when we come back. Nicely done, Beef. You've always been what's for dinner. And it's no wonder. While some have a good side, you have two. You're a solid choice for protein buffs. And you've even had a knife named in your honor. Yep, there are plenty of mouth-watering reasons why. When it comes to earning a spot at the dinner table, you've always made the cut. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Yes, ma'am. We're going to start with the beef stew. So what I like to do, this is just a gorgeous cut it's of beautiful, sirloin. beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Yes, it is. So since I'm just going to cook a little bit, okay. I'm not going to use all of it for the beef stew, but just look at this. It is gorgeous. So I'm going to take the string off. I just went to the local butcher to pick it up, but you can actually get it from your grocery store also, as long as you get a nice cut of beef. So I'm going to lay that on my cutting board. Yeah, and a lot of times when you, if you go to your, your grocery store where, the, where they have a butcher, mm -hmm. you tell them what you want, they'll let you look at it, and they'll pick you out just something really, right. really, really nice. And you know, another thing, they'll cut it for you. Yes. I like to cut myself. So if... You want to cut the meat yourself. What I'm doing, I actually cut this into about, what would you say, that's about an inch, inch it's and a half? It's going to make some nice stew. Right. So then that one, that way when I cut it, it's already at the thickness that I want. So I'm going to get one more slice on here. but And then we're going to get you started with your pot. It's already hot, but i got to turn your heat back on. Let me get these two. So while I'm chopping this here, what I want you to do is go ahead and get the rest of your ingredients in here, or some of okay. your ingredients. So we have a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna take my glove off here, 
And I want you to put, give me about two tablespoons of two oil. Two tablespoons of oil. Yeah. Two tablespoons. Okay, he's good. <laughs> we'll take that. So, um, and then add your onions in there and your bell peppers. Okay. Okay, okay. now I'm going to take these off. Now, how I have much onions well do you want me to add? I want you to add about a cup. About a cup. In there. So put about a okay. cup. So now, you hear that sizzle? Okay, That's so pretty. now we're going to take, give me some green onion in there also. So we're going to just let that go. So this is how you cut the rest about of the cup meat. Of, about a cup of bell peppers? About a cup. Okay. And then you can turn your heat down once you're ready. Okay. I stack two pieces of meat on top of each other. Now you want me to turn it down about halfway? Yeah, turn about halfway. Got it. Look at that. Okay. So now I'm going to turn it to the side. There's something about and I'm gonna die onion it. and bell peppers when they start cooking the smell with that oil. It is. It's right? It, that's the one tip I like to give to people. If you cannot cook and you have dinner guests coming over, you know, order some really nice food, but also take some garlic, a little bit of onion, mm -hmm. bell pepper, put some oil on it and put it in the oven. Oh my goodness. It makes the whole house. It does. I'm going to drop right. this right in. We're going to sear everything And you can together. feed a big crowd mm -hmm. with this beef stew. And I love beef stew over some good Louisiana rice. My goodness. Yes. Doesn't get better than Louisiana. No, it does not. Yeah, Louisiana grown. Why and not? And all of these products, you know, your onions and your bell peppers, you can go to a farmer's market or mm -hmm. you can go to the local section of your grocery store and get these products. Yes. And of course. Okay, so let that keep going. Okay. And then you're just going to stir. We're going to add a little bit of, um, we're going to add some seasoning in there. I think okay. you're, you're a little bit too low now. You took it to two. Well, I didn't See, touch I let that. you touch the stuff. And it, Commissioner? Huh. See, this is normally why I do That's most right. Of the That's okay. In here, so. okay. That's okay. That's okay. 11. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sounds good. Now, you can actually sear this off. It can be done outdoors. If you're cooking outside, you can just put it in a cast iron pot and put it yes. on, the, on the grill. Nice. Oh. So, we So, you I, like those cast iron pots, too, I do. Too, I right? really like them. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of crushed red pepper because I there like crushed go. red pepper. And I'm going to add a pinch. No, you add a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Pinch. Okay. Pinch. Sure. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to add some, keep on, some Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Okay. Add that in there. Let it go. And now I'm going to add some garlic in there. Okay. I like oh, we love garlic. garlic. So, yes, let's add a lot of that in there. And just let that keep going. Okay. So now it's time to add the um, the flour in here. So can I get two level scoops of the flour? And that's about a half cup once you put that in there. And we're adding the flour in here now because now we're going to build the roux. And then we're going to incorporate the rest of our ingredients so this stew can cook while we're making our other items. So, Commissioner, what do you think about that? Yes. Stir it all in. Stir it all in. Yeah, you want to get all of that coated. And that's cooking and, really well. Right, and then this way you won't have any lumps when you add the rest of your liquid Very in here. Good. So, Very yeah, good. Just, just a new little tip here. So, folks, we'll see you when we come back. Nicely done, Beef. You've always been what's for dinner. And it's no wonder. While some have a good side, you have two. You're a solid choice for protein buffs. And you've even had a knife named in your honor. Yep, there are plenty of mouth-watering reasons why. When it comes to earning a spot at the dinner table, you've always made the cut. Beef, it's what's for dinner. So now we're going to do our burgers. And these, you may say, OK, well, we're doing a burger. It's not your average burger. So can I have the ground beef? Yeah, absolutely. This is a nice cut of your ground beef. And it, it's, I, I picked up extra lean, so I like lean. But we're going to add in here. You're going to be my sous chef here. Give me a little bit of black pepper. A little bit of black pepper? Mm -hmm. Two pinches. Two, oh, two pinches. Two. We got some spicy burgers, okay? Garlic. A little bit of garlic. Mm -hmm. One pinch. Two. <laughs> Crushed red pepper. Okay. One. One? Yes. And then give me a little bit of oregano. Make a little bit of... Yeah. Okay. yeah. Put that in there. Okay. Oh, that's nice. And there you go. And a pinch of cumin. Right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Right here. That's okay. 
Mm-hmm. And I'll take the garlic. Okay. Put that in. Oh, that's, see, that's going to spice it up. Now, last thing, I do need a, a, just a touch of salt. Okay. And, uh, about a, one pinch. One pinch. We're not putting a lot of salt in here because okay. we're going to wrap this with bacon. So, look at this here. I'm going to mix it up. I'm not adding any fillers in here because okay. why add fillers into your meat? Okay, so now I'm going to pat it out. Now, for you guys out there, if you like a really thick burger, then okay, do too. So now I'm going to make, you can put this around a can, a soda can, whatever type can you want. I am going to use my fist. Okay, Look so you're going to indent and it. I'm making, right, making a little indentation. Okay. And hold that like that, like so. And this is where the can comes in handy. I'm going to take my bacon. One piece, unless you really, really, really like bacon. And Stuart, I think one of my guys yeah. here, really, he really, really, really likes, likes bacon. bacon. Right? But he's still only getting one piece. Okay. So, because when you see you everything else that goes in here. So now, okay. I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put this on my plate. And can you open this door for me right here? Okay. You need to let this rest for a little bit. Open the other side for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll put this in. And see my little Voila. cabinet. Yep, we'll close that. So it's chilled. You see how it's firming up? So mm -hmm. that way I can take this, sit that in that pan for a little bit, and we're just gonna let it brown let it, for a minute. Let it brown, okay. Now, can you crack an egg? I can crack that egg. Without breaking the yolk. It depends on Folks, how good a chicken this with... was. And you want me to put it in the center, right? That'd be nice. Okay. Look at that. How you like that? I like that. How you like that? So we're going to let that sit for a minute. Rosemary on top. You know where this is going now? In the oven. In the oven. And then we can move on to something else. So Very folks, good. we'll be right back. I'm Cade Lejeune. I'm the Executive Secretary for the Louisiana FFA Association. Our office is a part of the LSU Department of Ag uh, Extension Education and Evaluation. Our office is under the LSU Ag Center umbrella. LBIC has been uh, assisting FFA for several years now. Throughout, in, in FFA, one of our career development events, we have about 28 of these events throughout the year. They each focus on a different component of agriculture, and it's an organized competitive activity that requires students to take what they've learned in that particular agricultural career area and compete against other students for mastery of that content. So LBIC has supported the meat evaluation career development event for several years. They purchase all of the red meat, all of the beef that we use in that ID competition. So students in that event are required to identify different cuts of meat. So they, they place the USDA grade of either prime, choice, standard on specific cuts of meat. This year, LBIC came on board for an additional sponsorship. They provided uh, beef retail cut posters to put in all 199 ag departments statewide. So each of our ag departments throughout Louisiana are now going to have full color illustrated beef retail cut posters on their walls so that when our ag teachers are teaching their meat science curriculum, they can refer to those illustrations to show students what these cuts of beef are. The next time you see a poster like this, take a minute to look at it. You just might learn something. Folks, we are back. Look at this spread here, Commissioner. I this think is we're, wonderful. It is wonderful. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pour okay. some of this vinaigrette, and I will say my mouth is watering already. Mine is I too. tasted this vinaigrette. 4-H'ers did a great job. So I'm going to pour a little bit over our salads. And that's made with this Chef Celeste honey yeah, mustard. Yeah, honey mustard, right. and they added some other ingredients to make it their own. Beautiful. And without a recipe, they did an awesome job. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set for a minute. Okay. Then, while I'm dishing up the beef stew for you, because I already have my bowl, <laughs> I want you to dive okay. into that burger. It's beautiful so hamburger. Cut that burger. You can okay. use this knife here that I have in this awesome steak. I'm getting sidetracked, folks. Yes. Oh my goodness. Turn look that at, around so they can see. Look at what we can see. Look in the burger. center there. Right? Yes. You've got the egg there. There's the, the beautiful beef. Uh -huh. And look at that bacon. And of course we have that fresh tomato yes. on there and all the seasonings. That's pretty yeah. that's pretty awesome. I like that. That is gonna be so awesome. So again, now your beef wow. stew. Let me get you some broth on and here. And you made that with sirloin. It didn't and it didn't take very right. long. Right, it didn't take but long. A beautiful roux. 
because we have uh -huh. the sirloin in here, so okay. that the meat is actually nice and tender. So this one is for you. It's got all our vegetables yes. in there. We put corn, yep. beans, carrots and in there, and it's over a beautiful Louisiana brown rice. It is. Now I have to take uh -huh. your fork for a minute. Now you see, this is where the compound butter comes in. I put that on top. Let it. Let the steak rest for a few minutes. That's the hard part, letting it rest. It is, because right? you want to dive right, right into, into it. it, but you can't. And so. compound butter, you made that with butter, and you put some fresh garlic in there and mm -hmm. mixed it in. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. We're at a medium. Here, there we you go. can have the first one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank okay. you, thank Turn you. Turn that one that way. I am going to dive and take your spoon. No, mm. I don't, I'll use my own spoon. I'll be nice. I'm going to try to beef stew with you. What do you say? Delicious. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Fry stew. It's mm. nice. It's filling. You can taste the beef in there. A beef lover's feast. Yes, it is. Because we have a lot of vegetables in here, but we also have a lot of beef in here. So that's the mm -hmm. thing. If you're making a beef stew, make it a hearty beef stew and put the beef in there. So, burger, can you mm. pass that over, please? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do half. You take half. I like the layers in here where we have the tomato, we have the egg, that's going to okay. sear, not sear, but it's going to complement the beef that's wrapped in the bacon. So, you ready? You ready? Let's go. All right, I'm going to smash it a little bit. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. -hmm. And I was saying... Mm. All the flavors. All the flavors. That would be nice for breakfast, lunch, lunch supper, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm we can do this at home. I mm -hmm. can do this at home. Yes, it's I'm going to try easy. this at home. And just about everything we did here can be done indoors, or you can take it outside and cook it outside. So, Commissioner? Yes. I think we have given them enough ammo with this beef to go and create some wonderful recipes. And um, what do you well, say? And the thing about beef, one number one, it's very, very nutritious. Mm -hmm. It's high in B vitamins, high in iron. Mm -hmm. It's you know high in, in proteins, omega-3s. Mm -hmm. It's very, very healthy. And of course, the thing about beef, you can cook it very quickly. Yes. And, the, and the, you need protein, and you need the B vitamins and everything. It is nutritious and delicious, and you can do this at home in a very short period of time. And with that, folks, we are going to wrap this up, and we will see you next time on Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures.